now we're going to design the blade. Now I'm going to use surface modeling to create this shape. Now I use surface modeling when I'm struggling to create the geometry of a component by using just an existing uh, feature, so a solid component. So with surface modeling we can build up the pieces of data together. So we could start by creating a couple of the reference surfaces and then we start to actually knit those or trim those together. So I'm going to just trim out the different pieces and then we actually create our finished model by using that leftover geometry. It's a lot easier just to actually show it actually on the model. So let's go back into our design and make this part. So again, I've uh, created a couple of sketches just to speed up our design. So I've started off with the obvious data. We know the, um, the cross-sectional area of our shaft, which is an elliptical shape. Then I've created two sketches, one that shows the angle of attack of the blade. So it's where our blade's going to dig into the water and how it's going to twist. And I've also drawn another one. Again, it's just another spline in this case, which gives us our shape of our paddle. So we're using surface modeling here and I want to create a kind of an outside edge loop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a guide curve here by projecting these two sketches together. So by selecting both sketches, and then using the insert curve, projected curve, and we're going to do sketch on sketch. And then if we hide these other sketches, you can see the guide curve it's created. Now this gives me an area where I want to get to, but I need to create a surface to that. Now I could just use this as a um, as a sharp edge for my surface design, but actually the blade is kind of got it's got a bit of a thickness to it. So I'm going to just create a little profile now and sweep it along my new guide curve. So I'm just going to copy the outside edge, use that a couple of lines to trim off this piece, and then just delete off all the little pieces. A little dimension later, just to kind of get this all set up. And then we can just sweep that little sketch along the length of our guide curve. This gives us the outside edge of our profile and it also gives me something to work up to. So I need to create the spine of, um, of the paddle now. So this is just going to be a simple two point spline, snapping it onto the edges of our geometry. And then just twisting around a couple of curvature points. Now I want the bottom of the blade to match up with the rest of the design. So I'm just going to use a bit of construction geometry and make that tangent to those edges. I can then make that curve parallel with my existing one. So it just means that when it really hits the water my blade is equal to the edges. And at the top here I just need to make that vertical. Obviously that depends on how you're looking at it on the screen. It looks horizontal but actually my blade is vertical. And a quick twist of my uh, my guide curves and I've got the profile that I want. So now we're just going to do a surface loft. So it's exactly the same as a regular loft apart from we can just use edges. Going from my sketch onto my bit of my edge of my geometry and I'm using that back ellipse as my guide curve. And that gives me the top half of my paddle. It's the same process for the lower half of the paddle. So again, another sketch, could be a spline between two points, snapping onto all the ends and edges. Again, I want to align up the, uh, the way the blade cuts into the water, so I'm going to align that up with my original uh, guide curve and make that tangent. And then we just want to play around with the shape, adjusting the curvature to suit. And then it's another loft from the inside edge to that original edge of that little strip of reference geometry we created using the same elliptical guide curve. Now if we have a look at this, it's not looking too bad. So what I want to do is I want to mirror this to see my, uh, my whole paddle. So it's just like mirroring features, but we're just going to pick the actual surface bodies, both the top and the strip. And if we mirror that, so we can see at the top we've got a uh, kind of a split line down the middle. Now that's actually what happens with my paddle. Uh, but underneath I've got the same effect going on. Um, if you put on some zebra striping we'll see this. We can sort of see we've got a mismatch of tangency. Now I want that on the top one but I don't want it underneath on the actual working face. So if I go back into that loft 
what I can do is I can go down to my start tangency and just make that normal to the profile. If we put the zebra stripes on now, we've got one continuous fluid face across the actual working end of my paddle. So now that I'm happy with the uh, total shape, I want to turn this into a solid lump. So I need to fill in any gaps. So I'm going to just find the original sketch that we used for the elliptical pack piece there and turn that into a planar surface. So now this makes one complete surface, but I want to turn it into a solid. So I'm going to pick all of the faces that we've generated and I'm going to use the knit tool and create solid from this knitted bunch of surfaces. And then this is just now like any regular SolidWorks model. If we do a section through this, you can see it's all made and it's a solid lump. Okay, um, so just finishing off my design properly. I want to get, uh, this drives in the end of the shaft, so I just need to make a, um, a nub on the end. So all we're going to do is just offset this curve by one mil. And then extrude it by 25 mil or so, just so it goes in the end of the shaft. And I suppose what we want to do is, because it is now one solid lump, I'm just going to shell this out, give it a wall thickness of 1 mil. It does pop up a quick warning message, just because it's going down to effectively zero thickness at the end there, so it's going to have to um, do something quite clever with the shell. But if we have a look inside, it's perfectly fine. It's actually created as our two panels, and it's kind of blended it right the way out to the fin feature at the end there. So I suppose all I need to do is just smooth the edges off. So we're just going to put a couple of fillets, just running around the leading edges, about half a mil, both top and bottom, will be perfectly fine. Okay, and there's our finished blade.